Digital butlers are the next big thing. Google disrupts productivity. And who do you trust with your passwords? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 442 for Friday, October 9th, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Epson's new EcoTank printers. With Epson's line of SuperTank all-in-one printers, you can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit epson.com slash ecotank to find out more. Welcome, I'm Megan Maroney. After the break, we'll talk to Max Taves about digital butlers being the next big thing. But first, let's get to the tech news. Google Drive was down for much of the afternoon, and that provided a somewhat terrifyingly friendly reminder to many of us to save files locally on our computers. Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, and Google Classroom were all affected. Kudos to John Brandon from Computer World for coining the terms Google drive a get in and Docs Apocalypse and for admitting to the fact that the shutdown forced him to type his story using Microsoft Word. Google officially called the service issue a disruption and not an outage, and my files were all back by 2 p.m. Hopefully yours were too. That was Pacific time. Personally, I called it a real pain in the you-know-what and took the opportunity to explore other options for writing and sharing documents. You can email your favorite non-Google productivity tool suggestions to megan at twit.tv. If you use the password manager LastPass, you probably received an email today announcing that the company has been acquired by the remote computing firm LogMeIn for $110 million. If you don't use LastPass or one password or Dashlane or another password manager, you should. But should you be worried about today's news if you use LastPass? LastPass says this is good news. They have no plans to change their existing business model, and the purchase by LogMeIn means they'll have access to resources that will allow them to innovate faster. Not everyone is as excited as the LastPass marketing folk. Harrison Weber over at VentureBeat calls LogMeIn an awesomely terrible remote login company, and many on Twitter are mourning the loss of the independent password manager and wondering if they can trust the new company with their password. Passwords. Computer maker Dell made news today by confidentially filing for an IPO for its cybersecurity unit known as SecureWorks. The Wall Street Journal reports that SecureWorks may be worth as much as $2 billion and could become public by the end of this year. Dell bought the security software and consulting business for $612 million in 2011. This is the second time the once computer giant has been in the news this week. On Wednesday, we heard that Dell was in talks to merge with EMC, the parent company of VMware and a major player in the software and hardware market for storage products used in high-efficiency data centers. Recode reports that Twitter is planning company-wide layoffs as early as next week, according to sources. On Monday, the company announced that former CEO Jack Dorsey would be leading the company once again, and it seems that he is wasting no time proving that he's willing to trim the staff to improve the bottom line. The layoffs are rumored to affect all departments, especially engineering, which is undergoing a restructuring. The company currently has about 4,200 employees, according to Recode. That's roughly double the 2,000 employees it had before the IPO. And here in California, Governor Jerry Brown has just signed the Electronic Communications Privacy Act, giving the state the country's most comprehensive privacy laws. Tech companies in California will no longer be legally compelled by state law enforcement agency to turn over emails, text, documents stored in the cloud, and other digital communications without a warrant. The law is supported by Silicon Valley and the ACLU and will become law but will not apply to federal law enforcement authorities. And coming up, hiring strangers to do your mom's work. And Elon Musk said what? But first, this episode is brought to you by Epson. Epson's revolutionary EcoTank line of printers for home and office introduce a new age in printing. The new EcoTank ET4550 wireless all-in-one printer does not use ink char cartridges. Instead, it features an innovative refillable ink tank. It comes with enough ink to print up to 8,500 pages, equivalent to about 50 ink cartridge sets. You're loaded and ready to print for up to two years. It's powered by Epson's leading edge precision core technology. It delivers high speed, vivid colors and laser quality black text, plus auto two-sided printing, a 30 page auto document feeder, 
and easy wireless printing from tablets and smartphones. All EcoTank printers deliver an unbeatable combination of convenience and value with ultra low cost replacement ink bottles. Now you have the freedom to print without running out of ink. Visit epson.com slash ecotank today to transform the way your home office or work group prints. For the best combination of ease and value, turn to the new Epson EcoTank printers. That's epson.com slash ecotank. And we thank Epson for their support. Our guest tonight writes about startups and VCs for CNET. He previously wrote for the Wall Street Journal, Slate, LA Weekly, and others. Welcome, Max Taves. Great to be here. Thanks for coming on. So you have a great piece today on CNET about the on-demand economy and how really anything we could want or need done for us is just a text message away. Is there really anything I can't get with my smartphone right now? Uh, I think there might be a few things. Um, heroin. <laughs> anything okay. illegal, right? That that you make a, Everyone makes a point. You can get anything that's legal. Right. So. Pretty much. Um, not a live tiger. Um, you can't get a live tiger, and that was tried. But other than that, you can have thousands of pounds of dirt delivered to your construction site, like, through an app. So no heroin, no tigers, but dirt, massages, a pizza. Yeah. You can walk my dog. Uh, tell us about the most recent uh, one, that uh, Yes Boss. They just got some money, I think. Tell us about Yes Boss. So Yes Boss is a small company. It only has 24 employees, and it's in Jakarta, Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia is a huge country. And it just got funded from um, kind of a well-known American venture capital firm called 500 Startups, which has like invested in a lot of uh, successful um, startups early on. And the idea is that um, it's going to be allowing people in Indonesia to get anything they want delivered within um, in a short amount of time via text. So you text them what you want, and let's say you want to have you know book tickets to tomorrow's show. They'll do it for you. You want to have flowers delivered because you're too tired. You want to have them delivered to your girlfriend. You tell them where your girlfriend lives in uh, Jakarta, and they'll do it. So this is a, I have to be in Jakarta for this one. I couldn't, um, or can they book a flight for me if I'm here in Petaluma, California? <laughs> you've got to be in Indonesia for the service, but that doesn't matter because you've got plenty of options no matter where you are in the rest of the world. What are some of the other organizations that are doing similar things? Okay, well, they all have kind of these names that are all just kind of hearkening to subservient, you know, uh, servants, um, just someone who's just waiting on your hand and foot. So you've got, if you're in Australia, you've got Sherpa. If you're in Germany, you've got Go Butler. And in America, where, you know, getting people to do stuff for you is pretty popular, we've got a lot of options. Um, you know, you've got TaskRabbit is kind of a big one. You've got a company called Magic. You've got uh, Alfred, which sounds like a butler, right? And uh, so that's, that's a few. And the options are probably going to grow. Like next month, if we talk, probably going to have a few more. And so are these mainly in big cities or are they everywhere at this point? They're in big cities. Uh, it's hard to justify um, you know, being able to get something within two hours. A lot of them promise to get this to you now, which seems to be kind of a motif of all of them. You know, you want something delivered. It's this Uber effect. You know, no one has patience anymore. So that's hard to do if you live in the country. So most of these are clustered in kind of big cities. So uh, from your research, did you get an idea of who the people are that are on the end of the, the who the butlers are? You know, it's a really interesting part of this. Um, many of the companies kind of hide the fact that there's people on the other end. And there are. Um, in the case of um, uh, Yes Boss, you know, I asked, you know, how many people are kind of behind the scenes? And they don't want to talk about it. They say there's a network of curated providers, whatever that means. Um, you know, the German company Go Butler actually makes a point of humanizing the people who are behind the scenes. And other companies uh, don't. Um, but the truth is, it's not codes that are going to be delivering something for you. It's not codes that are going to be searching and finally pushing the button on the right price. It's a human being. Uh, you know. So it's not like Siri or Cortana or any of the other assistants I'm calling out right now by saying them out loud. They're people. <laughs> right. Well, this is, this is an important note, is that at the other end, I mean, the service is going to be provided by a human being. Some of them have algorithms that they say will actually do the, you know, price shopping for you. But there are, it's, it's not a complete Siri here. It's Siri with a human. I think it's a way of thinking about it. 
So you say the part of the lure of these services is that they're cheap, but it makes you feel like maybe you're more successful because you have a butler. Um, but but that's interesting because it sounds like the companies themselves think that most people are not really comfortable with people doing all these tasks. They'd rather believe that it was Siri on the other end. Yeah, um, you know, I think people, I don't know, people might like the idea that it's just, you know, uh, they live in some world where the person serving them is, is a computer, um, but they're not. But uh, it's also a pretty popular thing to, you know, save time and get things to do things that you don't want to do. So it seems to be a something that's, and again, I think it's something that's cross-generational perhaps, but especially popular among millennials for sure. Yeah, I mean, that I, I saw a headline. I kept looking for it, but I'm pretty sure I didn't imagine it. It was something that said, like, that this tech bubble is built on millennials who are just trying to find other people to do all the things that their mom did for them before they moved out of the house. <laughs> Yeah, there might be some truth to that. So, Max, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Max Taves is a, a writer at CNET, a staff reporter, and Max Taves uh, on CNET. Uh, take care. Hey, thanks a lot. Bye. And finally, tonight, I have a great love for all the crazy stuff that Tesla CEO Elon Musk says, and I have a great love for all things Apple. So imagine my distress upon hearing today that in a recent interview with German newspaper Handelsblatt, Musk used some fighting words. First, he claimed that Apple has hired all of Tesla's worst engineers, the ones that got fired for not pulling their weight. And then Musk went on to laugh at the Apple Watch. I don't even know what emoji I would use to express how I'm feeling about this right now. The only comfort I was able to draw was the fact that Apple Pay is now coming to Chili's, Starbucks, and KFC. And can you pay for a bucket of chicken with your Tesla? No, you cannot, but I will soon be able to pay with my Apple Watch. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash technewstonight. You can leave your comments there. You can also subscribe to this show at twit.tv slash tn2. And you can write to us at tn2 at twit.tv. And you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.